A part of the annual Christmas tradition on my channel, I look at each Home Alone film and dissect the math behind each trap, solving to figure out which ones would be deadly and which ones wouldn't. According to everyone I've talked to, Home Alone 4 is an abysmally horrendous pile of shit, and I'm going to have a hell of a fun time ripping it limb from limb. Oh, oh, what is, what is this? <coughs> Oh god, this movie is the worst thing I've ever unwillingly laid my eyes upon. Well, at least I'm ahead on my YouTube channel. Uh, just to note, I'm writing this script on March 9th, 2018. That's how far ahead of schedule I am. So I guess, let's just get this over with. We need to figure out how many times the burglars would die in this film. I've done the first three movies, and it's a part of my Christmas tradition, so let's just get it over with. In all honesty though, I actually like this movie at certain times, but I'm still going to treat it like its reputation, because why not? Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and let's hop in ASAP. This film has its traps scattered across the entire runtime as opposed to being clustered towards the end. Our first trap is seen here as stupid idiot Marvin is hit in the head with a door. This is not lethal or even remotely harmful. What follows is a flood. Still, not much I can actually calculate, but they do slip a couple of times and then they roll down the stairs. It's really sad. This movie, barely anything to calculate, but this Christmas tradition must continue. Vera hits her head on the tub tap, but collectively, this all only works out to a 50-50 chance for each of them. That's two 0.5s. That's one death point in total, as they don't do much that's deadly, but it still seems as though falling down the stairs would do something. Oh, by the way, this Kevin McAllister mockery is bluntly the most psychopathic child out of films one through five. He giggles and gets a seemingly sexual rush out of hurting the mentally deficient adults around him. The hell? Next, we have the scene with Vera in the bag out the window. A grappling hook flings from the door to Marv's buttocks, keeping him apparently frozen for a couple seconds before he flies into the window. Thanks to the pulley physics on the window, this one is one of the easier ones to calculate, though we can't factor in everything, as we know full well at this point. We could try to factor in the rope's friction, but the rope sort of flies through the air instead, so now, all we require in solving this is the weight of the grappling hook and the weight of Vera. Since there's minimal friction, the gravity of Vera pulling down is the same force pulling the hook through the air. I measured its mass and the time it flies through the air, therefore we know the speed it would slap his butt at. We can time the time it takes to stop, giving us a deceleration and by extension the force. It takes exactly two seconds of flying through the air, and after I painstakingly measured the length of the prongs, giving me the volume which I multiplied by density, I finally found its mass, which I divided by Vera's gravitational force to give me its acceleration which I popped into this formula along with the two second time to find the velocity at which the spiky prongs penetrated his cheeks at. Unfortunately, the grappling hook is shockingly tiny and only weighs like three and a half ounces. This means this whole method is broken and we instead have to find the velocity that it hits him at by using Vera's speed since it's all dictated by a rope. She falls for two seconds, accumulating a rough velocity of 19.6 meters per second. That sounds far more accurate for the speed, despite this method being a little rudimentary still. Either way, it visually does look to be about that velocity. Anyways, now we just have to find the deceleration. It takes about five frames to come to a complete stop, aka 0.16666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666666
Damn, where can I get some good calculations around here? Next up, Kevin hops across the table and creates a first class lever which sends two pots of likely heated sauce flying through the air and mystically onto their heads. Probability is not in their favor regarding the likelihood of this actually happening, but I can still nonetheless calculate it. Assuming, that is, that Kevin weighs the average skinny 10-year-old weight of around 60 pounds, all we need now is the combined weight of the two pots, which is something not easy to calculate. But for now, the forces. This force is equally distributed across the evenly lengthened table, so his landing force equals the shooting diagonally up force. After looking at his horizontal and vertical velocity, the time of contact with the table, and his weight, I found the force. 432.8 newtons. That's the force sending these two pots up in the air. The pots weigh very little after doing the calculation, not even 0.14 kilograms, which seems so low, but no fear, there is a great compensation in the sauce, which weighs roughly 8.63 kilograms per pot. That means that the force of 432.8 newtons is sending a combined weight of 17.54 kilograms, or 39 pounds, into the air. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The math gets more complex with kinematic equations, but basically it'll land on their heads with anywhere from 250 newtons to a whopping 13.6 thousand. This is because the velocity and time are fickly in place, but basically Marv would end up with all of the combined bruising a 0.75 and Vera a 0.25 on the death counter. Oh, oh boy. Fast talking, confusing, monotonous mathematics have just begun. Next up, Kevin opens a door, it casually swings back into place, and somehow launches Marv several feet onto a stovetop. What the hell is he? A damn balloon? Neither of them enter any lethal areas here though, they just go flying back. The stovetop burns da bam bam, but that could just leave scars and there's not obviously anything deadly here. Later on in the movie, Marv sticks his head underneath the dumbwaiter and it closes on his upper neck. Now I don't know how much force this dumbwaiter packs in its motor, it's impossible to figure out. I don't like the inability to calculate, I swear. This is turning more into a CinemaSins video than a serious analysis lol. But we do see in the movie that it has an automatic braking system when it encounters his head. Because later, Vera pushes the lower button and it starts to press downward on his head. However, the dumbwaiter was already caught on his head, so the acceleration into his neck here would be minimal. He eventually escapes, but the dumbwaiter then crushes his fingers. The automatic braking system prevents his fingers from crushing off, but still this gives him a total of 0.5 chance of death. The only reason is because Almost all of this happens on his lower skull, which can be a rather sensitive area in which a high power mechanical device can severely crunch. Next, Kevin lets loose a pot pendulum, and it goes swinging into Marv and then Vera. Using the angle with the ceiling I measured and the length of the pendulum rope I calculated, I found the velocity it would slam into their heads with. Two and a half meters per second, which is a fair clip. Along with the fact that I weighed their heads and the pot, we now know the force it hits them each with. Marv is hit with around 94 newtons, and Vera 63. That's around 21 pounds at Marv and 14 at Vera, which paired with their falls onto their heads equals a stunning 0.25 for both of them. Next, Marv falls onto his back, but no injury even remotely close here. However, the following armoire that tips onto him is likely lethal. I don't know the weight of it, but oftentimes, even empty, they can weigh in at over 200 pounds. Estimating ruthlessly, I'll give it around 250 pounds. After using the parallel axis theorem, equations for the moment of inertia, some energy conservations in the tangential velocity algebra, we find that this piece of furniture slammed into him with a very accurate sounding 4.75 meters per second. When it hits Marv, it has about 4 inches to slow as it hits his arms and body. Combining the mass, velocity, and impact distance into a force formula, we then find that it crushes him with 12.6 kilonewtons, or around 2,800 pounds. Definitely enough to harm him, and because I've been giving out too many 0.5s lately, I feel the need to compensate. So instead of giving him 0.75 or something, I'll give him one whole point here. Yay! On to the next one. Then, Vera slaps Marv. No injury here, but then Kevin Mock Callister flies a remote control airplane into Marv's, um tender testicles, at which point he flies down the stairs into Vera, where they engage in, um, oh my, that's weird looking, oh my. The plane flies at roughly 3.05 meters per second, it takes a shocking 0.2 seconds to stop in his groin, and it weighs probably around a half pound. This means that it would crush into his, um, 
testicular stations of baby creation, with around 3.46 newtons or 12.3 ounces of force. Not much, and certainly not lethal. Sliding backwards onto the stairs, however, has warranted a 0.5 for Marv, but none for Vera as she's on top of him. Finally, we get a fun trap to calculate. Some angular physics up in here. How many G's is this? Is it survivable? Let's find out. So at maximum speed, Vera and Marv go 360 degrees in a mere 0.4 seconds, which equates to them moving at around 150 RPM. They would fall off of it, but we're assuming they'd keep at that 150 RPM. Paired with the fact that Vera and Marv aren't quite in the center, this means that Vera's going around at 21 miles an hour and Marv at 32. In other words, that's 223 Gs Marv is experiencing, and almost 150 for Vera. This spin is 100% deadly. That's two more points. However, stopping them instantly wouldn't send them flying into the chandelier like the movie shows. Impossible. As I said, they'd simply fly out at 20 to 30 miles an hour, and most certainly would not go out at such a height. But the fact that this tangential velocity happens to stop so fast Let's us find a new kind of deceleration, the one of them stopping. Timing the slowdown time, we get a deceleration of 57 Gs on Vera and 85 on Marv, which is, again, enough to kill them. Or in the absolute, very least, throw them into the wall astronomically hard and then kill them. I'll give them both another point. Assuming they could make it to the chandelier, falling off would hurt. Marv lands with around 2,400 newtons, or 530 pounds of force, enough to kill him in the way he lands, since this is multiple stories high and his back would likely be severely broken. That's another point. Then Vera falls onto him. She has a whole 5 foot 8 inches to slow down, so her force once again wouldn't be nearly as deadly as his. Her weight is 57 kilograms and she falls at the same speed. This means that she lands on Marv with 580 newtons, or around 100 30 pounds. That's a 0.5 for her, but no thanks to Marv standing up. That's yet again one more point for him, especially because of the very specific way he tips over. Then Marv's mother shows up with a frying pan to presumably kill Kevin. Please, lady, do that. But Prescott the butler shows up with a massive tray and KOs that nutty old lady. This pretty much is pointless to calculate, and I know it not to be deadly because the tray impacts a little bit due to its flexibility. But later on, the two older siblings of Kevin trip Marv and Vera and send them flying into a bush. Obviously, this is not deadly. They land in a very cushiony vegetation pile, and it's kind of physically impossible to trip them like this, so no reason to calculate here. So there we go. That's three or four deaths for Vera and eight deaths for Marv, a collective total of 11 to 12 deaths in this whole movie. Shockingly, this is ever so slightly more realistic than past Home Alone movies, despite the spinning bar. Because there aren't too many deaths here, like the characters in this film who never die. Bravo, worst Home Alone, bravo. Until next Christmas with Home Alone 5, which I find to be considerably better than this one, I'm the Theorizer. I hope this confusing math void video was entertaining at least. Raphael MFAOOL! -O